Jerusalem. And so anyone who refused to immediately refuse to bow down and to worship, they were thrown into a flaming furnace. And, then, and so as soon as the people heard the music, they bowed down and worshiped as commanded. And, and, and people of God, we have to be so very careful not to bow down to society, not to give up, not to not, not to mm -hmm. give in on, on what God is doing. We have to be so very careful, so very careful to to, to make sure, make sure, make make sure that we keep our faith and our hope and our trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you uh, the uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to give you one more chance. One more chance. If you bow down and worship the statue, when you hear the music, everything will be all right. But if you don't, you will, you will at once be thrown into the fire of the fiery furnace that no one in Scripture has ever survived. No one in Scripture has ever, ever been able to get out of. That you will be thrown in. You will be thrown in completely. And, and, and so they make it very clear in the Scripture. They make it very clear. They say, Your Majesty, we don't need to defend ourselves. What, what, what brothers of faith? The God we worship can save us from you and your flaming furnace. But even if he doesn't, we still won't worship your gods and the gold statue you have set up for. We will not stop here for today. We will not stop, they say. So people of God, you, you hear the story of these mighty young brothers of faith. You, you, you hear the story and, and you can't help but raise the question what does this have to do with me? How does this apply to us in this 2020, this epidemic time? So, so what does this mean for us today? But there's a few things that I believe that during these times of uncertainty, Clearly, you have to come to grips with the mere fact that, that he is in the middle of it all. You have to come to grips with understanding that God will never leave you. God will not forsake you. You have to come to grips with understanding that he promised to be with you. You have to come to grips with understanding because just as he told Joshua, he said the very same thing to each one of us. And he said, I will be what? I will be with you even to the end of time. So when we look at this uh, text before us, we, we, we learn several things. We learn several things that in this world we will face, not just with these three Hebrew boys, but in this world we will face difficult situations. Amen. Difficult situations. The, the Bible tells us that in this life there will be trouble. If you continue to live, if you continue to move, if you continue to have your being on this earth, there will be difficult situations that you don't understand. Difficult, and that was certainly the case. That was certainly the case with these brothers. But one thing we learned from them is that they had the they had faith in God that was unmovable. Can the church say amen? They had faith in God that is that was unmovable, unshakable. And another thing we can we can uh, uh, take away here that that even when the when the favor of God often is on your life, there will be some who will envy your prosperity and success. You see, there were those that, that had sought the favor of God on the life of these three Hebrew boys before it was brought to the attention of the king. 
They envied, they envied them, but one thing they saw, that while everybody else was bound down to the music, that these three Hebrew boys would not bow down. They were, and as a result, they were promoted to high positions. We also see when we give, when we are given another chance to compromise, don't do it. <laughs> You're given a chance to, to, to compromise and, and, and to not trust God, don't do it, people of God. They stood strong, people of God. That in the midst of all that we're going through, you stand strong, people of God. You have a reason to stand strong because God says he's with you, he's with you. Even when you can't feel him, even when you can't see him, you need to know today that God is in the midst of your fire. God, God is in the midst of your valley. God is in the midst of your heated moment. God is in the midst of this pandemic. And because he's in the midst of this pandemic, we need to give our hand. Amen. We need to praise him. We need to salute him. We need to tip our hat to him because he is with us, people of God. Why we look further, dig further into the scriptures of God is encouraged for us to be encouraged in knowing that we should never, we should never, we should never allow anyone, people of God, allow anyone to convince us to dishonor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't let anyone, you see, they, they, they try to encourage them. Well, all you have to do is you just bow down. You just throw in the towel. You just serve the gods of this world. And we'll leave you alone. But don't allow anyone to dishonor, cause you to dishonor your faith or your God. Dishonor your faith or your God. So Nebuchadnezzar said that no God could save them from him. Far as Nebuchadnezzar was concerned that, that he was everybody's God. That I am your God. That I determine if you're going to be uh, promoted. I determine if you are going to be demoted. I determine if you will live, if you will die. And so Nebuchadnezzar said that no God could save them from him. Basically placing himself over their God. And nextly we see here uh, that, that, that we must face every attack that the enemy launches against us. We must face it head on that, that they weren't uh, intimidated or afraid of this king. They, they told it to him like it was. Being a Christian, you see, does not mean that you become the wimp of all wimps. Uh, uh, being a Christian should mean that you are bold and you speak bold on the behalf of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We also can, can, can pull away from uh, these scriptures here that, uh, that, that to know that God fights for us. God will fight your battle. Notice uh, in, the, in, the, in the scripture here how God supernaturally intervened. He supernaturally intervened. That they tied him up. They bound him up hands and feet and they threw him into the fire. But when the king looked into his, his special glass to see what was going on and, and how, yell, how loud they were yelling and and, and screaming in this fire, that he saw something, people of God. He saw something supernatural that messed up his understanding. That he began to question to his staff. He said, How many did you put in there? And they said, Three. But I believe he looked again and, like, well, they're telling me. Three, fix the screen, please. They're, they're telling, they're, 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 they're telling 
about this whole issue, this whole issue. We put three in there, but only four, only four, only four was manifesting itself. Oh, people of God, oh, people of God, don't allow anyone to dishonor your faith or your God. Face every attack head on. Know that God fights for us. They said that they did not need to defend themselves. In other words, they did not need to fight this battle. God will do it for them, people of God. God will fight for you. One of, one of the uh, uh, most damaging things a person can do to a child of God is to seek to hurt a child of God. When you hurt a child of God, you rest assured that at some point in life, you will need to deal with God and God alone. You will, you will need to deal with God. So know very clearly, as we see in the scripture, that God will fight for us. And then lastly, know that God is able, whatever situation, whatever situation or circumstances that you, that you find yourself up against, that God is able to handle your situation. That there is nothing that we can experience in this life that God is not able to deal with, that God is not able to take care of. The, the God that we worship can, and, and that's the bottom line, that God can do it all. That God was more than capable of helping their situation, and he is more than capable today of handling your situation as well. You see, your body may fail you. Your, 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 your spirit may, uh, may fail. Your sense of direction and discernment may fail. But, but whatever you do, keep the faith. Because he is in the midst of it all. You, child of God, you people of God, you keep, you keep the faith. You might not keep your head, but you may not keep your courage, but, but you keep on, uh, on holding on to God. Keep on holding on to God for God's sake and for your sake. Keep your faith. Uh, that in the midst of uh, being in a fiery furnace, people of God, they kept the faith. That, and in the midst of uh, this pandemic time, uh, what God has promised that he is in the midst, he is in the midst, we must keep the faith. We must keep the faith. The winds are, are howling, and, uh, uh, but, but you can't see it. Uh, the waves are, are bursting, but, but, you can't, but you can't see it. The, the ships and, and things in our lives, our very own ships, Seem to be seeking it, and, and, but we can't. But we can't see him. But we need to believe by faith that God is with us. Believe by faith that that He is in the middle of us. Believe by faith that at the proper time, at the proper moment, at the proper place, that Jesus will show His hands to people of God. That Jesus would show up as we see in the story here. That when Jesus showed up, it rocked the very king's life. It, it rocked his life. It, it changed his attitude. It, it changed his perspective. He didn't know what to do to himself. But he saw four people, four in the fire. But when it was time for them to come out, only three was left. You say, well, what happened? What happened? Is he still in the fire? Here's a revelation. Here's a fresh revelation. Is he still in the fire, people of God? The answer is yes. 
So in the midst of our heated pandemic, in the midst of our rough times, we came by today to let you know he's still in the fire. You know, one of the neat things about fire, fire does a, a lot of things, but, but one thing specifically fire does is that, that the fire has a way of testing how authentic you are, how authentic you are. Did you know that before they can put a stamp on gold to determine its wealth and uh, its authenticity, uh, to determine if it's 18 karat, 10 karat, or whatever, it goes through fire. And based on the amount of heat that it can take will determine its value. But aren't you glad in knowing that Jesus is still in the fire? So as the light brings you to the point of feeling like you're in the fire, be encouraged in knowing that he is in the middle of it all. That wherever you go, whatever you do, that God is in the middle of it all. God is in the middle of it all. And as the scripture says, that, that, that our God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. Notice as our text comes to an end, they come out of the fiery furnace. Everybody strikes them in, and they don't even smell like smoke. Not even a, a, a grain of hair has been burned from their skin. They, they look just like they look when they were put in. And everybody, even the king, was so encouraged that he does decided to denounce his faith in himself and begin to call on the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and, and encourage all his people to call upon the name of our Lord and our God. Because one thing that Nebuchadnezzar could see with his very own eyes that God was in the middle of it all. God was in the middle of it all. He saw it for himself. He saw it for himself. And, and with his own mind, he said, one of them looks like the Son of God. And I want you to know that while you may not be able to see it, while it may not appear that it is there, that he is in the middle of all your situations. It is up to you to, to gain understanding. It is up to you to, to, to grab a hold to this. It is up to you to get this lock into your mind that God is in the middle of it all. And this particular event radically changed the mindset, radically changed the theology of Nebuchadnezzar that once they came out, they were not only inspected by everyone just to make sure Nebuchadnezzar had not lost his mind, but after they were inspected, they were promoted. Amen. Amen. They were promoted, people of God. So God is up to doing great and mighty things in the midst of these difficult times that we're in. But in order for us to get through all of this, we have to embrace and hold on to the mere fact that God is in the middle of it all. Amen. God is in the middle of it all. Don't you ever forget, don't you ever forget that God is in the middle of it all. May God bless you. May God uh, use this, this message to continue to encourage you that as you go through each day, you continue to live each day one at a time. You continue to look to God to supply and meet your needs. Look to God to supply you and provide you with your daily bread so that you, so that you people of God, so that you can do great and mighty things for him. Amen. Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. We're going to pray. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray right now. Perhaps you're listening 
for the very first time that have never given your life to Jesus Christ, we want to encourage you today. The Bible says, who's ever called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If we confess in our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. So if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. This is a moment of truth today. Just call upon yourself and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Savior and my Lord. And, and God will do that. He said, if you call upon him, he will save you. Amen. So we want to close out in prayer right now. Father God, we pray you will bless the people of God. Thank you for our time that we share together today. We give you the honor, we give you the glory, we give you the praise, Lord God. We, we plead the blood of Jesus, Lord God, over the entire church family, Lord God, and our relatives and, and those in our spirit of influence. We pray your continued protection. We pray that you watch over those that have lost loved ones. We pray your peace and comfort over them. And pray, Lord God, that you'll be with us, Lord God, as we have our communion. Our time of communion this afternoon at 3 o'clock, Lord God, we pray your blessings, your blessings on us. We pray, Lord God, heal someone, deliver someone, set someone free, Lord God, that's been living in bondage, that's been living, has been going through the fire, Lord God, release them and allow them to come out, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, and we praise you, and we give honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Amen, Amen. Good afternoon, good afternoon, you YouTube viewers. Um, just some housekeeping. Just reminding you that in the morning, every morning, we have weekly prayer at 6.30 a.m. So start your day off. Let's get up every morning at 6.30 and give the God our attention, our priority, and see how your day goes. It's wonderful where you can get up in the morning and just seek God. Also on Tuesday, on Tuesday night, we have Bible study on Zoom, live on Zoom, which give you an opportunity to um, interact and ask questions and so forth. So it's Bible study. So let's study the Bible together. It's Tuesday night at 7 p.m. live on Zoom. Also, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, KLB Ministries. And if you don't have an app, please get the app TWFC Pines where that you can um, view videos, sermons, and also send in your time. Remember guys, uh, to keep the door open, to keep coming at you every Sunday, um, giving you the word, and bills still have to be paid. Please be faithful in giving. Be, continue to be a cheerful giver, especially in times like this. Um, we're tested with our faithfulness to the kingdom of the Lord. Also, if you have experience or you are skilled in um, lights, camera, the we're looking for someone in the media ministry. As you see, sometimes our YouTube channel go off. You know, with technology, you never know what's gonna happen, so we apologize for any glitches. So we need someone who is skilled in that area who can help us out. If you have a specific prayer or in need of anything, please give us a call. We're open 24-7-954-843-0273. Also, um, remember this evening at 3 p.m. we'll be having our um, communion service live on Zoom. So um, your package has been sent out, and as far as I know, everyone has confirmed that they received it, so please join in at 3 p.m. this afternoon, live on Zoom. The link also will be sent out to you. And um, that's it, and just wishing you to have a great, great, and a blessed week. Let us go forth in prayer, and just, we just wanna thank, just go, we just wanna thank the Lord for just bringing us through 
another week and we look forward for him bringing us through the next week because he has been faithful. He hasn't been faithful in everything that he promised and in everything that he does. He has been a good father and we thank him for his goodness, his mercy and everything in everything that we do, we shall continue to give him thanks and praise. So go before us today, dear Lord God, as we continue to fix our eyes and our hearts upon you and we give you thanks for the word that you have sent us today. And we pray that it gets set within our hearts, dear Lord God, and that we continue to do the work that you call us to do. We thank you for in Jesus' name, amen.